What will never be the same again once the pandemic is over? Time spent with my kids. Pre-pandemic I would leave the house 5 days a week at 6. 15 am to commute to the office. Usually before anyone else in my house is awake. And I'd get home most evenings just in time to put them to bed. I'll never go back to that. The past 8 months I've actually seen my boys grow up in front of my eyes and I get lots of quality time with them every day. Even with work from home. I know now what I was missing. Hopefully your boss will finally admit that all his dumb meetings actually could have been emails all along. My marriage. My wife and I had to work from home together, separate jobs, from March until September when she had to go back to the office. I am still working from home. During this time, we became increasingly closer. I have heard so many stories of marital problems being caused by COVID. I literally miss my wife every day she has to go to work. I meet her at the door like a lying puppy. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. Sometimes forced proximity does too. My dogs have expected me to basically be around all the time and rub their bellies 24 stroke 7. Small businesses. Most of the mom and pop stores in my town are gone forever. Some of these stores I grew up with. Nickel Arcade. The tiny French bakery my aunt took us to when we got good grades. The only ramen shop open after 10pm. My favorite donut shop. The fancy British tea shop I never had a good date in but many London fogs that were utterly perfect. The only dim sum place. The handmade mochi and tea shop. The only cigar shop in town to get fancy cigars. I lament the death of all these tiny businesses I took for granted. I always thought they'd be around. Now my community is left with just brand named box stores. No more originality and flavor. Just closed skyrise buildings surrounded by a garishly lit Denny's. Olive Garden. And Target. A massive amount of people now know they can work from home. Obliviousness to how many things I touched between hand washings. Office life. My company has already announced that once we are allowed to go back, we'd only be going once or twice a week. It seems many realized how feasible working from home is. Ask someone who did time, they'll notice all the stuff we got used to. I read an article about a guy that went into the woods at the beginning of March and totally cut off communication for 100 days. He came back to an entirely different world. I will not take hugs for granted. Yep. My mom passed away unexpectedly in October. Because of my asthma. My mom took extra precautions around me and hugs were completely off the table. The last two times I saw her. I tried to hug her goodbye when I was leaving. And she said no. Of course I respected that. And we did an air hug. When I found out she died. The first thing that went through my head was the fact that I had not hugged her since January. And I never will again. There's millions of others in my shoes. And it's unheartbreaking. Edit. Ro. Thank you all so much for the kind. Beautiful words and love. My heart goes out to all of you who lost a loved one and are grieving. As well. If you can't hug someone you love right now. Let them know you love them in some way. It's so important. And something we all take for granted too frequently. My attitude towards my entertainment backlog. Previously I used to look at my PlayStation library or my Netflix list and think if I just had a few weeks off. I could make a serious dent. I've had more than a few weeks off and my backlog seems if anything more endless. I'll probably be in the retirement home with that little voice in the back of my head going peaky blinders is meant to be good. My waistline. My bank balance. In the words of the great Tiger King himself. I am afraid that a lot of karaoke and spas in our country will go out of business. Standing next to someone after they sneeze. Today. I watched some lady pull down her mask. Sneeze with her mouth fully open. Spit flying everywhere on the product. When the line leader called her out on it. She got angry and started ranting. Left after lunch. My definition of personal space. 
Edit. Holy crap. I haven't logged into Reddit since I made this comment and it blew the heck up. Thanks for the awards all. Although the hugs trophy is kind of miss the point. LOL. Drinking fountains. Some people deep throat the faucet. Costco free samples. As a nursing assistant. I will be forever oh so hesitant to get near someone. Particularly the elderly who like to cough directly at you. Without my eye shield and mask. What the hell is up with old people coughing straight at you? All you can eat buffets. No joke. Pandemic in UK started the 13th of March. I was super lucky cause my birthday was the 12th of March. And still is now I think about it. And I went to my local buffet and I ate to my heart's content. Chances are I was one of the last people in our town to experience the joy that is an infinite birthday cake. Edit. Ro. Amount of people who share a birthday with me and have seen this post seems too many. Fantastic. Healthcare workers going to work without a mask on. Food delivery just being dropped off on your doorstep. Remember when you had to go outside and make eye contact like some kind of person. No more. My friends. Just leave it outside and I'll get it when I'm ready. No more scrambling to find pants when you're half baked and hungry. I'm a delivery driver myself and I can tell you I appreciate it just as much on my end. I don't gotta deal with gross people or weird. Just drop that off and run. Shopping will continue to be mostly online and malls will likely die out faster than they were already going to. Oh man. Going to malls and just. Walking around. I'm going to miss that. My faith in humanity. Blowing out the candles on your birthday cake. Movies. Unfortunately. Cinema specifically. I'm sure a lot of production companies will take enormous losses or possibly file bankruptcy as no one is paying to go see movies anymore. The other issue being that no one can really make movies at the moment either. Travel bans all over. Logistic issues. Actors not able to be within close proximity to one another. And then all the post-production work that, for the most part can't be done from home. Little to no support for creative arts jobs from governments around the globe. Artists encouraged to retrain in other sectors. It's devastating. Literally this morning. Our local paper reported that the government is aiming to achieve full internet coverage throughout Indonesia. Reaching even the remote villages by 2024. We had a local meme as our boomer minister said a few years back something in the line of why do we need strong internet access? It took the poor stealing smartphones for the sole purpose of letting their kids attend online classes to convince them. So the answer to the question is. Some boomers view on the value of internet accessibility. I'll have to start putting makeup on the lower half of my face. Crap. I have the impression that people have shown their worst part and this will have consequences for long time. As a current college student. I am in favor of keeping recorded lectures. It's way more helpful than just having notes or slides. As a college professor. I both agree and disagree with you. I hope for both. The recorded zoom sessions are excellent and a great resource so I don't have to reteach to those who skipped class. However. Networking is one of the most important things about college and it's difficult now. I don't necessarily know any of my students this year so it's hard to write letters of rec or refer to jobs. The best thing you can do is if you attend a live zoom session. Lean in. Show interest. Nod along. Laugh at the jokes blunders. Share. I find myself teaching to those students and think of them by name. It makes a huge difference. Good luck. College is worth it so long as you have a goal. Seek out internships my friend. People coming into work sick to show how dedicated to work they are or saving those days for mental health days meant ironically. No Justin. Don't come over to my desk with your coughing and runny nose telling me how bad you're roughing it at work to get some sympathy. If you're looking for sympathy. Look under the dictionary between and syphilis. Anytime you're sick. You'll wear a mask. 
am amazed at all the times I flew before when I had a cold. And didn't wear a mask. Video games. They feel like they did when I was a teenager again. Usually I feel guilty that I'm not doing something more productive. But right now I could care less about spending a whole weekend doing almost nothing but playing video games. Having been the funeral organist for numerous pandemic caused deaths. I can bear first hand witness to the sad fact that the families and friends of the departed brought to their death by COVID-19 will never be the same. Hopefully working from home, WFH, will become more of a normal thing. And companies will have much smaller offices. I really hope so. Also you to my, ex, manager who refused me permission to work at home pre-lockdown because she also needed to review my work. Well. With you no longer micromanaging me I managed to get promoted above you so I think we know why you really wanted to keep me under your thumb don't we? The phrase avoid it like the plague turns out people don't do that. Cruise ships. I'd feel fantastic if remote work remained permanent. I can get rid of my second car to save money. Lunch at home. Meetings are shorter and less annoying than in person. People have actually been sending work over email instead of interrupting me with their random ball. And it's pretty awesome not having to deal with traffic or deal with people in general. I don't understand people who are dying to go back to the office. Seriously? For me it's the extra sleep time I get up exactly at 7 now and I'm online within a minute by rolling over and logging in. Also the instant offline thing. Once quitting time happens I just do the I wanna do. It's like gaining an extra hour each way it feels like. Just shower over lunch. A small thing but I hope the QR code menus at restaurants stick around. Airline fares. Now they are doing all this validity extension and not charging change fees. As soon as COVID is over. They'll go right back to the restricted fares of before. Fewer weddings. More elopements. My respect for a great many people. Hopefully frequent hand washings will become the norm. And hand sanitizers in shops. Restaurants and public spaces. As someone who refuses to touch food if I haven't washed my hands, I am emetophobic. I'm terrified of the stomach flu. This endless supply everywhere I go is really nice. And people who usually don't care about washing their hands do it more often. I've enjoyed the solitude of not having so many social obligations. Once this is all over, I'll have to go back to being the arsehole that lies about not feeling well to get out of them. People actually give a crap about hygiene. I thought I was crazy washing my hands for a minute after I used the restroom or used a paper towel to open doors while leaving it when so many other people didn't. Completely grossed me out. Who knew understanding how viruses work would be a life pro tip? They'll probably leave the plexiglass things up. That's probably it. I think masks are going to become standard in hospitals or when someone is sick. Other than that. There's gonna be way less stores open 24 stroke 7. I think a lot of the ones that were 24 stroke 7 were trying to go back to day evening hours and saw the pandemic as the perfect opportunity to switch. I don't think they'll go back to 24 stroke 7 after the pandemic is over. I will never give handshakes again. Slap ass gang rise up. My opinion of everyone I know. My mother's friend. She was in her 70s. Smart and snippy and the kind of old lady everyone loves. And had plenty of good years ahead of her. But COVID got her. She'd have survived if the government had reacted quicker and better. And all the people who cared about her, well. Their lives will never be the same without her around. Blowing out birthday candles on a cake then eating it. My eyesight and hairless palms. So many people's lives. Including mine. For me personally my dad got covered in March and still hasn't recovered. It made his childhood asthma. That hadn't affected him since he was 13-ish. Come back but really bad. And he can't do a lot of physical activity anymore. He has a doctor's appointment almost every other week. 
to see a lung specialist or some other doctor. The crazy thing is he is only in his 40s and didn't have any pre-existing conditions. He was in the emergency room quite a few times while he was sick. This virus is no joke even if you're young and healthy. Stay safe and wear a mask. 3. 3. TLDR. My dad got sick in March and he will never be the same again. I'm sure this is true for many other people too. Grocery shopping. A. As someone who worked for a grocery store delivery service. I'd think twice. These people are rushing hour after hour picking orders. What do you think happens when your fruit hits the ground and rolls away? They ain't wasting time going back for a fresh one. No contact delivery. The word quarantine used to lead everyone to think of hazmat suits and whatnot but now everyone just thinks of being locked at home. Coughing without people death staring you. Group M sturbation. My faith in Americans to have a functioning brain. My mask basket by the door. My mascot. I call it. From now on. I will never not wear a mask when sick. I don't care if it's a tiny cold. If I so much as have the sniffles. I'm wearing a mask. It's honestly just common courtesy that I should have done for my whole life. My best friend will never be alive again. Trust in the US government. Pretty sure that was gone years ago. We're never again going to call Asian people weird for wearing face masks. Coughing or sneezing in public places. My whole life. I lost my mom to the pandemic. She was only 45. And because of the pandemic. We weren't allowed to visit her street the hospital very often. Mom. If Reddit exists in heaven and you are reading this. I just want to say. I love you. Childhood development theories. We now have an entire group of children who have missed what are regarded as developmental milestones. Learning to play cooperatively with others. Learning to share. Empathy building. Etc. Seeing people's faces in public indoor places without masks. It really does and it's weird how quickly and easily that taboo has become established. I have these bizarre moments when I'm watching TV or a movie and think. What the? None of them are wearing masks. I will never take vacation days for granted again. My family never really went on trips or anything and I can't afford much in college so I always used school breaks either to work an extra day or to catch up on school work and then get to see my friends posting pictures from places I could never afford. Well now this is my last year of schooling, I go off onto clinical rotations for my program in May, and the university cancelled fall and spring break so we're basically just going straight through to the end of the semester with no days off. I didn't really think breaks did all that much for me but this is stressful as hell. No extra day off to catch back up where I put off something to study for another class. No bonus income from the extra hours for fall break. And all that added stress makes your studying less efficient too. Vaccine research. It will have made incredible progress. Dave and Busters. I don't think it's gonna make it. And I'm going to miss that place. Seriously. I have at least $40 of credit on a bunch of their cards and I guess at this point I just have to chalk that up as a loss. Wait. The pandemic is going to end? Face to face communication. Shaking hands. I think that's finally done. Nah. It's way too instinctual. Met some colleagues in person for the first time the other day and we shook. Didn't think twice about it. I hope meetings like school board, PTA, church organizations, ETC will continue to at least have a zoom option if not stay entirely online. Our local school board has had about 10x their normal turnout for the meetings since they moved online. Part of that was all of the uncertainty over the plans for this fall but a lot was also that people are willing to watch a school board meeting from their couch but not leave the house in the evening to go to one. My social life. I thought I had friends. But I've had zero conversations with them since the pandemic shut schools down in March. And from what I've seen. I'm not the only one. 
Lots of people are finding out that their friends aren't actually their friends. It's kind of a depressing realization. Honestly. My opinion of some Americans. God damn you ers are crazy. Giving other humans the benefit of the doubt. And keeping my opinion to myself. PRN. Got. The plague and fetish mask categories will pop off once people get over COVID and start being horny again. It's 2025. The COVID-27 virus reached its final. Most devastating form. Capable of infecting and spreading to all living or guess MS. The virus laid waste to every country. Engulfing our planet in a vast. Never ending sandstorm born from the life we once cherished. Every day is a struggle. what are you doing? Step bro. Can we keep if you have to go out in public sick? Wear a mask? I am a guy. So I haven't had to deal with how tight this is. But I have heard from a lot of women that they hope after the pandemic is over. They won't have to let strange men give them kisses on the cheek all the time as a standard greeting. In addition to that. I have had lots of girlfriends say that guys have used that type of greeting and accidentally kissed them on the lips. Or just generally used it as a way to grope them. Another example is a lot of women are finding it liberating to not be told by men that they should smile. Since they are wearing masks. Nope. No more. You greet another person by waving and saying hi. Without touching them. Going forward I hope there will be way fewer situations that my gf. Or any woman. Will be expected to subject herself to the unwanted touch of random stupid doucher bags. My sanity. The way I look at the world. My life because it'll be looking for a relationship. I'm hoping that this convinces the American. Pretty much everyone else has this figured out already. Masses that healthcare is a human right and should not be tied to employment. The pandemic has shown that plenty of people lose their jobs through no fault of their own. Despite their best efforts and that should not condemn them to either going without healthcare or accumulating crippling debt when they lose their health insurance coverage. You are putting too much faith in us. History. People actually knowing what six feet looks like. Seriously. My belief in the basic goodness of people. The thing is. The pandemic will never really be over. Sure. There will eventually be a vaccine. But like the annual flu shot. You're probably going to have to get one every year. Just about the time we think we've got to beat. The virus will say hey. Evolution is a thing. And will kill a bunch more people. Coronavirus is always going to be there from here on out. And we're just gonna have to accept that fact. The most likely tale of the pandemic is a virus mutating to be less deadly. That's how the Spanish flu ended. It lost, almost all, of its ability to kill. The versions with this mutation outcompeted the 1918 strain. For school there will most likely be no snow days or any kind of day a teacher has to call off due to certain reason because you can just use online class. The district I work for has decided to keep snow days. The statement was something like it's a crucial and traditional part of childhood here in New England. And we wouldn't want to take that away from anyone. They went on to talk about how it's a healthy mental break day for most students. It was pretty awesome to hear. Face masks will be mandatory in hospitals. Movie theaters. My partner and I used to make it a point to go see a movie once a month. And before that. As a child and then teenager. My family made a tradition of outings every few months to see new movies. I'm afraid of losing the theater experience. The experience of other people cheering or crying. Booing or roaring. At certain scenes, Marvel movies come to mind. Going to a movie was a huge treat. We couldn't afford snacks or 3D showings or drinks. But we got to sit in that huge dark room and hear the gasps and laughs of other guests. And hold each other when things got scary or stressful. And I'm... Not ready to let theaters go. If it means the rebirth of drive-ins then so be it. I love those more. But movie theaters mean so much to me. The loss of them will be brutal. Typically after every year. 
A bunch of memes come out saying how that current year was the worst year ever. Let's just say that meme trend will end after 2020. Dating is going to get even more app related which I not good for most people honestly. Especially if people work at home more and don't go out for entertainment. Among Us Popularity Being in a large crowd at a concert or a match. I now couldn't imagine standing in a crowd of 80. 000, 000, 000 dancing together. Seems so unhygienic. I am waiting for the day we can finally do this again. Because I have a giant hole in me that can be filled by anything else. My love for my hometown has vanished. The citizens here are anti-mask and anti-science. They risk their children's health with parties and say if their kid dies it's God's will. Blame Trumpism 100%. People who live here throw garbage all over the place because they don't have to be politically correct anymore. They drive by and yell the n-word out at the black people who live here. Even if children are there to hear. I will forever loathe and disgust the town I grew up in now it's the place where I had wanted to raise my children. Trumpism ruined my hometown and the pandemic showed who the people who live here have become. I feel filthy living here and have already begun looking for a job elsewhere. We're putting the house on the market. My whole sense of community and safety is gone.